GB member, past year person Flo Jaipur, and a sports person who represented India in International Badminton Championship in 2019. Welcome one and all present over here. My, my is the woman empowerment is directly related to economic empowerment. And there is an entrepreneur in each and every woman. Hereby, we you all, all with the great community initiative, which is to support and promote distressed artisans. Adding to this event, there is a diamond whom we all know. I welcome Ms. Vasundara Raja Sindhya. She is an Indian politician, currently serving as National Vice President of Bhartiya Janata Party and also hold the position of Chief Minister of Rajasthan two times, five-time member of parliament and five-time MLA. With career spending almost 35 years, Vasundara Rajaji has emerged as one of the most tallest female politicians in India. A global ambassador for Rajasthan, she hails from a royal family of Gwalior and Bhagpur. She drives much of her inspiration from her mother, late Rajmata Vijaya Raja Sindhya Ji, the founding member of BJP. In 2007, she received Women Together Award by UNO for services rendered towards self-empowerment of women. In her tenure of work, women empowerment in Rajasthan took a great boost. I am positive this session will serve as a Bible for women looking, for shatter, looking to shatter the glass ceiling. Now I invite Ms. Janvi Fukai. She is 37th National President for Fiki Pro and the first flow president from India's Northeast. Ms. Janvi is an entrepreneur and co-founder of two national tourism award-winning companies. in Bengal Navy. We also have here with us Ms. Nalika Kutla. She is the Director of Home Member of Color Marketing Group of USA and Founder Organizer of Color. We have with us none other than our own past national president of the EPRO, Ms. Nita Bhutra. She was the 31st national president and first from Rajasthan and founder chairperson of Flo Jaipur chapter. He is executive committee member of SAC Chamber of Women Entrepreneurs Council in India. Now I invite Ms. Nita Bujda for her welcome address. <laughs> Nita ji, over to you. Yes. Thank you, Alka ji, for that wonderful introduction for all our special guests today. It's so, so lovely to have Vasundra Raji ji with us today, Jan B. Fukan with us, and the All India, Pan India members, and this beautiful virtual audience. Thank you so much, Alka, for that wonderful introduction to everyone. Gulabi Sheher Jaipur se aap sabhi ka abhivadan, abhinandan. Happy to see you all virtually in these special pandemic times. Flo, as everyone already knows, is South Asia's oldest chamber of Bimba's business and commerce with 17 chapters span India and more than 8,000 members. As a woman entrepreneur myself, a dweller, I believe nothing empowers a woman more than her own money in her pocket. Women empowerment is directly related to economic empowerment. Sashak Mahila, Sashak Samaj, Sashak Desh, Atmanirbhar Bharat are directly related. As the president of FLOW, we did concentrated efforts towards skill training of women and young girls. Knowledge is power. And towards that, May I inform Vasundra Rajeji, especially, that we publish, as the national president of Flow, I published this book on laws affecting women in India. It has got all the laws related to a woman right from inside her womb to her last rights. And it is a colorful document, as you can see, with each and every right of her right here right under in one compilation. This ready retina has proved to be very, very useful to everyone. 
and we've had uh, repeated requests to have them in all the languages also. Today is the launch of Flow and Creative Dignities joint initiative to support artisans, to make them Atmanirbhar. And to launch this, we have with us a true champion of women's rights, a woman who walks the talk, an inspiration to all of us, Srimati Vasundra Rajeji Sindhya. Indeed, we are very, very happy to have you here with us. She has been extremely supportive to Fiki Flow right from its launch in 2008, 14 years ago. And all my chairpersons, the past chairpersons, remember how wonderfully benevolent she has been towards Flow. So we come to this launch. Handloom industry is a valuable skill resource. It has minimal use of capital and power. It's environment friendly. It is very flexible. There's a scope for innovation and it can be a huge growth driver for women to join India's economic force, workforce. With this interest and this effect in mind, our president, John B. Fukan, the first national president from the Northeast has taken up this onus, such a crucial intervention in these pandemic times. Congratulations, Jan B. Her focus is on sustainability, which is undoubtedly the need of the hour. And this would be a solution to recovery and resilience. And what challenging times they are facing because of this, but yes, They've, as true champions, they've made the most of this virtual world. John B. and her entire team has been wonderfully rocking the entire nation. We've been witnessing such wonderful, innovative work by her and all her chapter chairpersons, one better than the other. I can see Malu from Mumbai, and I can see uh, Usha from Hyderabad, I can see many more, but these I can see directly. So a big hello and a hug to all of you. And also as a president, past president of Flow, when I look at where Flow is today, I feel proud that Flow has been able to build a formidable network of motivated and talented women leaders. They rock and they shine all around. A big hello and a shout to all my past chairpersons of Flow Jaipur. Again, I can see Minal there and Alka Batra very much there. A big hi to all of you. With these words, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. And at the end, we will say that this is not a prayer today, but we will have to do this constantly prayer because श्रम के पौधे पर सफलता के फूल खिलते हैं सिर्फ श्रम हमको करना है हम सबको वो प्रयास करना है हमें एक फोकस के साथ जो आज एक बेड़ा उठाया है जान भी फोकस ने और क्रिएटिव डिग्निटी को उसको हम सबको आत्मसात करना है उसको सक्सेसफुल बनाना है दैट इज व्हाट वी ऑल नीड टू प्लेज टुडे थैंक यू सो मच ओवर टू यू अलका थैंक यू Thank you very much, Shinkra Ji. Aapka sunkar hume josh a gaya bhoot zyada. Aur of course, there are two power, three power houses are there together. You, Vasundra Ji and Janvi Ji. So, bhoot hi hum logon ko apne energy feel ho rahi hai. Anyways, to coming to the next, now we have Latika Kusra Ji with us. Um, I have already uh, introduced Latika Ji. Uh, she is uh, after all these design initiative. I would like Latika Ji to please give us brief about this initiative. Over to you, Latika Ji. Namaste. I am here to talk to you about Fiki Flow's association with Creative Dignity, a cause that I'm closely associated with as a volunteer. The Creative Dignity movement itself is a movement of volunteers, and it's fired the imagination of the best professionals, whether they've been producers, artisans, ho, state ke NGOs, ho, ke sector experts, design practitioners of students. Bahut simple approach hai. The whole idea is how do we first give relief and then rehabilitation and rejuvenation to the artisan. Artisans want work. They don't want charity or handouts. And a few months ago, when ground research was done, 
इट शोड दैट द कारीगर विदाउट एक्सेस टू रॉ मटीरियल दे हैड फाइल्ड अप स्टॉक्स उनकी ना तो रोबस्ट मार्केट थी फेस्टिवल्स का नामो निशान नहीं इवेंट्स नहीं हो रहे हैं और इस वजह से कोई कंटिन्यूइंग ऑर्डर्स और सेल्स नहीं होने वाला था द फ्यूचर सेम ब्लीक दिस अ वॉटर शेड मोमेंट अलाउड एस टू थिंक हाउ डू वी इंटेग्रेट दीज कीपर्स ऑफ क्राफ्ट एंड एनेबल देम टू पार्टिसिपेट इन टू डिजिटल फ्यूचर्स इन ऑगस्ट आर्ट इज एंड डायरेक्ट स्टार्टेड विद अ गुजरात कैंपेन टू मैनेज स्टॉक सेल्स बाई ई कॉमर्स पार्टनरशिप्स विद फोर अमेजिंग प्रीमियर वेबसाइट गेव a platform to boost this movement of stock you know when we can't get to a marketplace or touch or feel products hath nahi laga sakte we can't engage with the maker we have to rely on the image so we are ever grateful to the gujarat chapter of fikki flow to rupa and reshma patel who personally engaged and sponsored the photography and made this first step happen creative dignities professional team of volunteers the state heads the organizations design schools and rajasthan's craft institute students overnight all helped in cataloging the photography and calibrated the pricing the creatives and the media planning fikki also helped to spread this good news through its massive network which you've just talked about and because of that support today in just a month artisan direct is gratefully able to go national with flow pan india states and artisans are participating in what will be launched today and an increased number of partners partner websites who also work along with this entire group of artisans and enablers in the most transparent manner nothing will give us the best example of this unless we hear it from the words of the artisan aur aap sabko dekh ke mujhe raji ben ka ke words yaad aa rahe hain jinhone jinki aankhon mein aansu the and she said itni sari nari shakti dekh ke mere ko lagta hai ki hum aage hi badhenge and another very savvy uh, artisan literally wrote the new rules for the three p's of economics he said agle bari हमें ये भी सीखना है कि हम और अच्छी फोटोग्राफी कैसे करें हम प्राइसिंग कैसे करें ताकि हम लोग भी अपना स्टॉक ठीक से कुरियर कर सकें और हमको अगले चांस मिलना चाहिए टू पिक द ऑनलाइन पार्टनर्स प्राइसिंग फोटोग्राफी एंड पिकिंग द इक्वालिटी विद विच दे इमेजिन दैट दिस प्लेटफॉर्म इज गिविंग दैन विद माइल्स टू गो बिफोर वी स्लीप we fittingly are on the cusp of the new year 2021 that has been declared by the united nations as the year of a creative economy and who better to take us there but these masters of their craft who we always want to call creative manufacturers thank you thank you latika ji for you know giving us insight about all these artisans and all now i would like to invite our most dynamic and beautiful national president janvi phukan to please come and address us thank you janvi ji over to you yes yeah. so namaste a warm welcome to all on the launch of flow creative dignity initiative to support and promote distress artisans we have with us Shrimati Vasundhara Rajay Sindhya, National President BJP and former Chief Minister of Rajasthan. Shrimati Sindhya ji, I am honored to welcome you on behalf of FLO and the 17 chapters that I represent as the National President. An astute political leader, you are known for your huge contribution to the development of the state of Rajasthan. You, ma'am, are the first is the first woman to be the Chief Minister. to be the women chief minister of Rajasthan in recognition of your work towards empowering women in the state especially by promoting self help groups and facilitating the establishment of the micro credit programs the united nations conferred its women together award in 2007 to you your promotion to the cause of the handloom product and your contribution to products of the kota doria and to khadi the promotion of khadi has been globally recognized 
So it is of great significance to us that we have you in our midst today as we wish to inaugurate Flow and Creative Dignities Artisan Direct Campaign to support and promote the distressed artisans across the country. The handloom industry is the largest cottage industry in India, generating direct and indirect employment of over 3 million weavers. According to the fourth All India Handloom Census 2019-2020, there are over 3.5 million handloom workers and allied workers about 24% of the overall. And we find that the maturity that means 2.3 million of the handroom workers are female and they mainly belong to the 18 to 35 years age group. And this sector, like many others, but this sector in particular has been uh, so badly impacted in the pandemic with their traditional and contemporary markets totally closed. And as we know, it has left our millions stranded with no access to raw materials, to the market, or even to basic sustenance. And Flo, as a woman's wing of Fiki, we should work towards empowerment of women for the last 37 years. We, this is a very responsible and a cause that we needed to go for. Before this, let me mention that with having of the 37 years that Flo has been here, our past president, Nita Bushra, who spoke to us, has been the one who set up the Jaipur chapter, has set up, she was the only president who set up three chapters, in fact, Jaipur, Pune, and Indore, in her tenure, and all are robust entities. Besides the fact that Nita Ji also makes exquisite jewelry and uh, has been the national president from Rajasthan, we think that with all these uh, great past presidents we've had with us, and what I had come from the Northeast as the first president from Northeast, I had come with my um, vision about uh, sustainable practices and sustainable livelihoods for women, economic empowerment. That was my first thought. And uh, coming from where I do, the handloom is so much part of our lives. Handloom and agriculture go side by side for the women of the Northeast. So with that, when we saw the opportunity being being provided by Creative Dignity and the great work that they're doing and the way they envisage the whole uh, situation and they're with the ground knowledge that they have. It was in, imperative for us to join hands and together with Creative Dignity now we envisage this platform to recognize our rich heritage of handloom, to bring sustainability spot on and bring to light the women behind these handloom. The, the unsung women artisans who don't get their due. And now in pandemic times, this is the best time than ever before to recognize that the handloom industry is the, is the model of sustainable livelihood. Like tourism, that another industry that I come from. These are industries and these are sustainable livelihoods which will run the test of time if we can make that happen. So with that, we have uh, in this first, uh, First uh, batch that we're doing, the first stage that we're starting today, inaugurating, we have our, we understand we are empowering artisans from West Bengal, Rajasthan, UP, Madhya Pradesh, Delhi, Puducherry, Kerala, and Bihar. We want to give uh, the artisans access to the market. Then we have our flow, 8,000 women marketplace there, as well as the community beyond. And we hope to work side by side to learn more as we go along and see how we can improve this and be well positioned to learn from this, adapt and see how best we can add value and we can see that our, our distressed artisans get that, uh, get that, the right price that they give. We eliminate the middlemen. We see that the money goes directly into the women's hands. And like uh, Latika Kosla, who the design director of Freedom Tree, uh, it's a color and trend studio based in Mumbai, who's been a mentor for this initiative. It's been a great uh, learning. It will be a great learning for all of us at Flow to associate with creative dignity and take this larger passion forward. So with that, our Honorable Chief, Miller, Chief Guest, Srimati Vasundara Rajay Sindhya as a token of our appreciation gratitude, we would like to present a virtual memento to you. 
May I ask IT to share it on the screen, please? Now, after that, we will run a small video. Um, IT. Yes. <clears throat> This would be the virtual memento. <clears throat> which we will see that those two, Basundaraji's uh, physical face in due course. But are we taking a little time with this? And after that, we would like to run a short video, very small video. This is some uh, network issue. I'll come. I think Let's yes. do the video then. Okay, we are here. Mm. If, um, are you seeing it or am I the one having the problem? Okay, right. Right. Thank you. Vasundaraji, a small memento from our side, from Flo. Right. Next, can I ask IT to play the video, please? Now request our chief guest, uh, Srimati Rajeji, to please address us. We are all waiting in flow and creative dignity to listen to you. So, um, Janaviji, the national president of flow, and my friends, Nita Ji, who was the past president of Flow, Prakab um, Batra Ji, all the past presidents um, and friends, and uh, Latika Ji, who, if I remember rightly, I think uh, somebody from the organization was also present at our Crafts Council, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But I am today really delighted um, to see that Flo is undertaking this terrific uh, initiative and especially at this very important time. Uh, I know of this particularly because I have been very closely connected with uh, artisans in distress it was one of the things that we looked at when, we, when I came first to Rajasthan. We have an, in Rajasthan a, a, a huge capability to become a, a global uh, leader in crafts and textiles. And during my time at, uh, as chief minister, we worked extensively with industry experts, including Vicky, to see how we could actually move these ahead. Because as uh, Latika Ji said, they're really looking for work. They don't want charity. They never did because they really believe they have it in their hands. If the opportunity is given, they would do a very good job. So it was the case of actually empowering our artisans. And it was one of the pegs on which we uh, created our governance model. One of the things that we launched, and as you said, as Nitaji said also at this moment, there are during this pandemic so many difficult things that people have to go through. We go through, you can imagine what the artisans must be going through. Yes. All those extremely wonderful uh, 
programs that used to be held in various states have come to uh, naught. I mean, they've really all wound down. So as a result, there is nowhere for them to go. So this, your Creative Dignities uh, initiative uh, to support these artisans is absolutely at the right time. And it will give a, a, a platform for local artisans to collaborate with designers and basically be able to show, uh, showcase not only their craft, but to be able to take it ahead and maybe even sell it. This was something that was a dream at that time for me, almost uh, eight years ago. But it required a pandemic to start it off. I hope that the benefits of this go right down to those who are at that village um, level. We did do something called Rajasthan Heritage Week, as some of you may know, and I think some of you attended. Um, we also used uh, this platform basically to rebrand Khadi. It was a, a very important part of Indian culture. Um, and I thought that Khadi needed to get you know, to, uh, to be able to get back on his feet. And since I managed to serve as union minister in charge at that time of Khadi, and then again, I had this opportunity in Rajasthan, I felt it was very important that we uh, strengthen our artisans this way. So whether it was working in the village of Kethun, or whether it was at the border of, of Barmer, whether it was sourcing local materials, whether it was the Kota Doria or the Khadi or the cotton or the mull, basically even promoting the, 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 the chap, chapai, what they call the printing, block printing in Bagru and Sanganir. We tried to leave no stone unturned to get this done. And then we brought on board people like Prasad Bidapa, there was B.B. Russell, there were so many other uh, designers and artists who came to work with Rajasthan to help our artisans. And in five years, we actually were able to do quite a lot. It was just the beginning. I believe we could have done a lot more. But when I first came to Rajasthan, I have to tell you that I found that the situation of women was pretty bleak. It was, a, it's a, it's, as you know, a very feudal society. And in this very feudal society, to make women uh, the center point of anything actually can be quite troublesome. When you think of Rajasthan, you think there's this picture. And you think of the man walking ahead of the, you know, striding ahead and there's this picture of the woman standing behind him with a uh, with a, a, a portly on her head walking three steps behind him this is the picture that one used to get of rajasthan i believe that while our traditions and our heritage have done great things for rajasthan and also probably are one of our strong points they have also been in some way or the other one of our weaknesses because our women have not necessarily been given the best opportunities to access resources and then be able to actually sell um, what they produce in the market. But when given half the chance, I thought they did actually as well as the men. So when I visited these places where the traditional work was actually being supported by government and I found how beautifully they'd done it and how well they designed it with a little bit of help, you could see that given half the chance, were doing wonderful things that perhaps they'd never been given the opportunity to do. So a, women had glass ceilings and actually bent on proving their worth. Today, if you look, you can see leading business businesses there. They're succeeding as entrepreneurs. They are dominating their field. They are now seasoned professionals. And I'll just give a few examples to you from what the women that, uh, you know, that as you see them, have, have been able to do. Payal Jangir actually in Rajasthan is a teenager who was honored with the Change Maker Award by Bill and Melinda Gates uh, for their campaign, for her campaign against uh, child labor and child marriage, which as you know, is a big thing, which is a major problem for us here. Manju Devi was the first woman porter. Uh, she comes from Jaipur uh, of the Northwest Railway a very male dominated field. I don't think anyone ever thought that a woman can become a coolie, but she did do it and she's done a great job of it. Then in Barmer, which is the border area, we have women like Ruma Devi, who has actually managed to showcase, and she's a, she's a woman from the area, from the villages. She's actually showcased her works at the Fashion Week in London, in Germany, in Singapore, and in Colombo. It's fantastic. 
I mean, really, she's on magazine yeah, covers. Yeah, and <laughs> we have also got something called Sola Sahelis uh, in uh, district in one of our districts, but they not only retail but also repair solar devices. Then we have master welders, women in the JCB factory representing the Made in Rajasthan brand. Um, I, there was a time when we had my mother and that age group all behind the Ghungat. Uh, it was a practice that my mother actually was able to shatter uh, and helped us, made like us, go to schools and learn to stand up and speak to raise our voices. So coming from a royal family, she also campaigned with the people, she challenged society, and she was hugely important for us for uh, creating change. But she still managed to remain a woman, elegant and, and modest and beautiful. Over the years within with government and within government, I have actually been able to uh, work with many valued colleagues just now in parliament. Um, and they too have left their own very, very important and indelible mark on uh, the way those areas and those societies have uh, moved ahead. As Chief Minister, I had the privilege of working with many strong women officers who were prompt, proper and tough and were able to uh, walk side by side with their male counterparts. Uh, I always believe that there are certain advantages uh, of being a woman in a position of leadership and so despite the challenges of government, we needed to work to see what we could do for the women. And unless you make women responsible and bring them out front, it becomes very difficult for uh, us to be able to uh, make leave that mark. So basically, 50% reservation for women at the lowest rung, which was the Panchayat, uh, Panchayat uh, Raj institutions, what exactly is the role that we perform when we are in uh, a home? If, whether it's the agony aunt or whether it's keeping the family together or whether it's basically being a sounding board for ideas. Um, it's really a role which is no more different than uh, running a business or actually even governance. So it was important to bring women out and make them understand that the position that they hold it's not because of anybody or anything, but because of themselves and the importance that they themselves hold within their own family circles. So to give prominence to those women in the house, used a program called the Bhamasha Yojana. And at that time, I must tell you all that in 2006, 2007, there were actually no uh, idea of cards, of using cards like we do in, um, at the village level. So to use a card to make the woman the most important member of the family, to put money into her bank account, to make her stand on her feet, and to actually be one of the first, it was the first state to bring digitizations of this sort into the woman's hand. Through Bhamasha, we managed to empower the women and make them the solid heads of the family with financial entitlements, which were transferred to their names. That was one very major program. And of course, um, it, it has helped women to come out and to be able to do business. Then uh, we named the most important low budget meal program that was went out to all the poor people, the Ma Annapurna scheme. Again, we wanted to bring that to women. The, this government, of course, has recast the NEA scheme and relaunched it. Uh, but again, try as they might, they still ended up with a woman. So now it is called the Indira Gandhi scheme for food. So it doesn't really matter from Ma Annapurna to Indira Gandhi. It still is a woman. Then it is important that we actually take or make an effort. And this is what I will ask all of you to do. Some of you have uh, involved yourselves in it. But the scheme is of transforming school education. How many of us can join governments in transforming school education? I found that there were a lot of women and a lot of organizations that would work with us to transform this most important focus area. To in, and to see to it that we were able to increase female enrollment because unless the girl child studies, there's no way that she's going to be able to earn her place in society. So we launched many schemes in by which we hope that the young girls would remain in school because there is a period 
in which they go back home. So as youngsters, they are, they are with us. As older children, they come back to us. But in between, as they are going through puberty, their children, their parents take them back home. They say it is to actually uh, make them learn housework. But I think that this is a very important period of time which needs actually for the child to be in school. So by rewarding them with things like scooties, by giving them cycles, by giving them laptops and scholarships, we impacted them enough to bring Rajasthan from the 26th spot to the second spot in school education. And this was not just government alone. It was a whole gamut of people working together, which is again why I'm saying to you and suggesting to you that perhaps you could do this with various governments, your own governments, so that there was a rise in the number of female students graduating. Then there were things like the Rajeshri Yojana, which we used to change the mindset of the rural area where the girl is considered a burden. And it's very important that the girl not be considered a burden because there was a time at long, long ago when people said that girl childs were done away with, eliminated. Through this scheme, the government bears the financial burden. Again, um, government and organizations outside government also worked with us to see that her, the financial responsibility of the girl child uh, would be taken up by the government and them uh, till the time she, from the time she's born to the time she graduates, which was a very big deal. We also went a step further for the workers, laborers, their girl child. If that girl child were to study or to set up their own business, they would be able to access loans up to the tune of 55,000. So that more and more of these came on board. And most importantly, it was something called the Bahamasha Techno Fund, which we started for startups with a special provision to uh, head startups, uh, I mean, to, to support startups which were headed by women. This was a very, very successful initiative while it lasted until the government was there. Um, and it also helped the uh, economic encouragement and empowerment of women um, in a big way. To this, we joined dairy cooperatives at the rural level. And we also introduced that milk into uh, the midday meal scheme so that a lot of this milk could get back into the school system um, and also fill the pockets of the women. And most importantly, at the end of it all, we thought it was important to provide sanitary napkins to women, free of cost, so that it becomes a huge initiative that people will not be embarrassed about. And that would be one of the reasons why these children go back home, would now continue to stay with us um, through their school period. Uh, I tried to make an effort while the, uh, as a chief minister to, uh, you know, to uh, organize it such that there was in no way, uh, their voice was in no way uh, brought down. I tried to be their voice. And because as a woman in power, you know how difficult it is uh, and how many struggles it took to get where you are. Because normally people look at me and say, oh, but you were born with a golden spoon in your mouth. There was never a, a point where you would run through problems or you would have to break through a grass ceiling. But let me tell you one thing, all of you, it wasn't as easy as you think. And for all of us, we've had to struggle. So whether it's me, whether it's you, or whether it's them at the lower level, everybody, if you're a woman, has had to struggle to get to where they are. And I know how judgmental people could be, what their attitudes were, the kind of challenges that you would need to face, and the vilification. You saw what happened to Jailalita. I mean, at that point, the kind of vilification that you have to be or be able to actually take, if you want to make it as a woman in a man's field, uh, I think is known to most of us. So it's very important that being graceful, being proper, and that's being part of uh, a hallmark of being a woman. And even though it has its own faults, um, I think it's important that we try to be able to bear with things like malice and character assassination and fictitious incidents that get attributed to you. I'll give you some examples. There was a very famous thing when I, when I became chief minister first, being, this is now almost 20 years ago. So what, I was about 40 something. And uh, at that point in time, I, I, I remember uh, when I came in, they voted me in, 
But then there were all these people who said, HPM, no CM. This became a really famous line over there. I thought to myself, that is really strange that one has to go through this. This would not be a line that, it would not be a line that would be used for a male. So why would it be a line that should be used for a female? And let me tell you one more thing, that if, for example, if by any chance I had allowed people to walk into my house in the late hours, beyond a reasonable point of time, I can see how many more tongues would have been wagging. Because as a, as a rule, we never finished work at 8 o'clock. We worked till 10, 10, 30. And we used to come back home late because there was just so much to do. But the kind of, uh, the kind of vilification, the kind of uh, talk that uh, they have in what they call the men's locker room conversation, all those things, even a person of chief minister rank would have had to take. So if we had to go through that, I can imagine how many things would have had to, so many ordinary people have to go through to get to where they are. So it's actually difficult for a woman in a public space. To negotiate this, you need a lot of calm, you need some poise, and you certainly need a strength of character. So as I said, at this point in time, we may shatter every glass ceiling. We may rise above every odds that we face. We may become a force to be reckoned with or whatever. But if we want to change the status quo, guys, then really we must become champions of change and soldier on till we have more voice and more access. So when I see the women scripting her own success, I do feel a great sense of pride. And therefore, <coughs> this particular topic of yours, where you're talking just about artisans, and I'm wanting to bring in education along with it. Until we are able to strengthen women at every level, we will not be in a position to make them strong enough to face the world as it is. A lot of us, and a lot of things have changed in the last 20 years, but a lot of things have to change. And I think that we are finally on the path to giving our future generations an equal representation in society. But we still have a long way to go. And I'm sure that all of us, especially with organizations like yours, if we persevere, we will be able to make it. So I would like to just close saying that I have and I should always discriminate in favor of women. And frankly, when somebody asks me about it, I would say I would be very proud to discriminate in favor of women. I think it's time for all of us to get, our, get up and uh, have our voices heard. And uh, we're second to none, that much I can say. We have the grit, we have the determination and we have the ability. And there are a lot of us right across all these states and right across this country. And I believe that if we join hands, we are in a position to change the lives and fortunes of all those people who are not as fortunate as some of us. So this is a wonderful opportunity you've given me that I have been able to interact not just with those of uh, Rajasthan, but that I have actually been able to reach out as far as the Northeast. And that Janvi ji is here with us today. Janvi ji, I just wanted to tell you that I am also in a strange way related to the Northeast because my sister was married into Tripura. Of course, so, I know that. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. far away at that, I am yeah. able to reach out and let me give you a big hug and tell you, you that I'm so, so proud to see you sitting there, I know that you people are going to be able to change the fortunes because actually you're the women who did it much before any one of us did. Yes, we it's have. A female to... Yeah, it's a female dominated society. Yes. And they need to ask you first before they do anything. Yes. So I think that it's the right time. You're where you are. And I'm sure that under your very able guidance, all of us are going to be able to do our very little bit, our little brain of sand, to help all those women who need our help and to whom we can stretch out our hands and work together with. I'm sure it will work. Thank you so much for having me here with you today. It's been so lovely. And I really enjoyed being part of this program of Restoring Lives and Livelihoods. Thank you so much, Janvi ji, for having me. Thank you, Nita ji. Thank all of you from Flo. Thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity today. Yeah. Uh, Vasudra, ma'am, um, if you allow us, we, we can have your questions from our, you know, uh, members. You're absolutely welcome. 
welcome welcome so pasindar raji will be take some questions and thank you yeah. so much yeah okay yeah but then i will thank you since we are short of time who is coming on we would like to ask uh, can i ask uh, no i think i uh, poor uh, chapter chair vandana wanted to ask first and then to you rupa vandana yeah. of uh, yeah. our uh, chapter yeah. chair jaipur vandana harnami go yeah. ahead this is a this is a very uh, powerful women panel and i thank national president bjp and former cm rajasthan madam vasundhra rajya for her insights a dynamic president vicky flow ms janvi frukan for her compassion for artisans of india ms neeta bhutra founder chairperson flow jaipur indore pune past national president vicky flow from rajasthan gb member and past chairperson flow jaipur ms latika and everyone present here namaskar to all of you uh, so coming back to my question uh, to madam uh, vasundhra ji uh, urban women especially those holding positions are empowered how and what all they can do to empower women at grassroots level uh vandana ji there is only one way i think it's most important to first start to educate those people and if you're in government if you're in government the most important thing is to do is to go right down to the bottom level and see that every girl child that you can catch is actually educated because giving her that education means giving her the freedom to be actually able to step out onto a stage whether it's the local the national or even the world stage like ruma has done but i'm saying that organizations like yours are also doing a wonderful job by giving them platforms through which they can showcase what they have and be able to actually uh, enter the economic cycle this is something that i think is also very important but if you don't educate there is no way if education level of women is going to remain at 33% then you can forget about it until we bring them to that 70s 80% that we're working at unless we are able to do that and by the way i want to tell you all there are a lot of women mm -hmm. i mean like rajasthan uh, in the last two terms in the last 10 years we've been able to bring to the second position as education for women but for a long time we were at 30 to 40 45% and that is not good enough for us because it's only through education that they can actually understand uh, what are the opportunities that are laid out before you thank you thank you okay thank you next so uh, can we have rupa patel from uh, and the bar hello and the bar the governing body member rupa patel go on rupa thank you thank you uh, vasundra rajaji what a lovely uh, insights you've given us today um i'd like to because it's a burning issue right now is the artisans are the i mean our artisans are the backbone of our heritage and how can we sensitize the creative dignity movement to a huge reach at such grave times and how i mean of course flow is going to do its bit but how will the government also how do you think we can reach out because if we lose we are losing them a lot of them are committing suicide mm -hmm. and uh, the stocks are not moving so how do we um, you know first of all uh, rupa ji yes. first of all rupa ji this first it's a very important subject mm -hmm. and it was something that we were worried about even before the pandemic hit because once the pandemic hit then lots more avenues closed down but before the pandemic hit even then as you very well know getting the artisans out and about was not an easy task there were a lot of people working in small small areas but to bring them out onto a platform for that we had to do all these the heritage week we had to bring all these new things so that we are able to bring uh, bring these people to be able to sell lots of melas were held across the state so that we were able to and then we even uh, funded them to go out to others but now you can't do all of that so the only way to do it is online yeah and i remember at that time we were talking about online and how is this going to happen and uh, bibi russell had come from bangladesh to work with us and uh, we were working on this and that platform never happened there was a platform that was working in a few places in bombay for example and there were others across the country but today because of this pandemic everybody is online 
So now this has become the way of the world. There is no other way. We're going to have to do all these shows online. We're going to be able to, or want, we're going to have to display our wares online. But meanwhile, governments have to be able to subsidize and support these organizations that help them and also those who are the artisans. So the facilities that were given for the artisans, for example, a common um, a design center, a common area where they can meet and work, a common area where looms can be set up, like we did in Kethun in uh, Kota, or like we've done in Barmer. Those kind of things will have to be subsidized by the government. Women will have to be given short courses on even on online or whatever it is, because before we used to do it face to face, but now you can do it online. They have to be taught so that they can get on with that, their business there. And design has to be shown, colors, design, all this has to be shown to them. And then they have to be, well, actually shown how to market it. So I, all this is going to be, have to be done, but we have to subsidize them financially as governments. Banks have to be able to help with loans. And all of these things, as I would look at it, not as a woman uh, or an artisan inspired thing, but as a small business. And if you're looking at small business, it's very, very important that we be able to support them financially too. Thank you. As, as, as a, a small industries minister, we used to do these. Yes. But um, I think that it's something that perhaps if you people will work together, I mean, if Flo works with us, then maybe people like me, maybe people like Latika Ji and few of us could all work together online like this and then be able to speak to government and see whether we could, um, you know, work with them to bad loans or to have their payments made on time because a lot of them have delayed payment issues also. So that payments made on time uh, to see that the quality is, is done properly and uh, what kind of financial supports actually that can be asked from government and given to them from banks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is, there, is there anyone from uh, Creative Dignity who would like to ask a question? Or I have uh, another chair waiting to speak with uh, Matsundaraji. In that case, would Haritri like to come on? Haritri Patnaik, she's from Orissa, Matsundaraji. Uh, okay. She's our flow um, chapter chair, Orissa. Oh, nice. Namaste. Uh, it was lovely listening to you. And you've been always very inspirational for people like me who's always thought of joining politics, but, and I take 10 steps backward. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and you very rightly talked about the vilification, and it yeah. happens in all sectors whenever yeah. someone does it you know, mm. does something and achieves anything. So it's never about a woman doing it because of her credibility of her, whatever substance she has. My question is a bit different. Uh, it's not about, uh, like we have forums now and this great campaign and volunteers, dedicated volunteers of creative dignity and flows uh, uh, this whole idea by our president uh, to uh, make uh, the invisible artisans visible. But there are also a uh, lot of performing artists who've not been able to find a way out in this pandemic. They're suffering a lot. And there are performing artists from every state. And this has been one of the worst situations they have to face and have to you know, literally go hungry. So any ideas, anything that you are doing in your state or helping them out so we can learn and replicate? Uh, well, we worked with textiles. And, oh, first of all, let me say how nice it is to talk to you and Rita. Really, it's so good to meet with so many concerned ladies. And I'm sorry, but your face has just gone off the screen, sadly. Okay, because, can you see now? Yeah, maybe? now, because it was a very pretty face. So, <laughs> so I want to just say basically, you know, uh, we worked with textiles and we worked with artists. We worked with tribal art, uh, that kind of thing. Uh, we worked with uh, their sculpture, again, tribal. That um, We worked with uh, uh, Khadi and that. But even as far as, uh, as uh, artists are concerned, I mean, I would imagine that uh, street plays for those poor people, we did things like street plays. 
and they were again we supported government supported because there uh, was a group of let's say we would have a, a function where let's say five or six or eight p uh, groups would come and then you choose two or three i'm just making it small make choose two or three and allow those two or three to um, you know go to wherever whichever areas you wanted them to and at that point in time you would support them uh, that they would have traveling fees they would have a certain amount of money to be able to live on and we gave them uh, time periods of something like 3 to 6 months where they were able to travel and then they were able to rotate that so uh, six groups were able to do it now and then six groups would do it again after them and then six groups would do it again after them so that they were given that kind of time period and they were also given uh, a line a story line so it could be uh, teaching girl children it could be sports it could be uh, uh, going towards uh, music uh, though it could be uh, how to stand on your own two feet you know it was those kind of programs that they would do for the government then uh, at that point in time the government would support them so it's just one way of doing it because otherwise when on a normal day they don't really require it because they go out into the streets or they have their plays and people pay either ticket or they pay to come at even at the street uh, street play but these were the kind of th- initiatives that we did when we were in government thank you very much we also did things like the music festival uh, in udaipur it became a world music festival people came from all over but our people were also allowed to uh, showcase their music at that particular uh, so it could be tribal music it could be any kind of music which was local to the or it could be something more sophisticated but government was able to come in by supporting the festival itself and uh, it also came in by giving them a line and giving them a job so in this period of time while they were not having too much to do they could go out but we did it when there was no pandemic now there's a pandemic i don't know what exactly they're doing yeah it's tough i mean to have uh, them to showcase their talents in an online digital world it's going to be a challenge so yeah. like we have this artist so we could i mean their product is their performance no but for that but for that i'll have to tell you that they will have to do the i mean the government will have to uh, take out a channel you know a digital uh, thing for just uh, for them and then allow them to use that channel this is i mean as i'm looking at government but it can be done by other people also it can be done by say doordarshan it can be done by others okay. you no know? everyone is involved here yeah they can everybody can do it everyone even i uh, um Faith Singh of Anoki, she did it in uh, for the performing artist. There was a special festival that was held online. This yes, so it has to be done like that online. So, so it, like, yeah. like Fiki, I mean, like Flo can do it. Yes, you know, you do it. It can be supported by everybody, just like the Rajasthan, uh, 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 what do you call it, festival that we do for books. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, the Jaipur Literature Festival, except that was on the ground actually, but you could do all of this on. Yes. line and give them the opportunity government can do it you can do it uh, radios can do it televisions can do it and you did it in jodhpur also yeah we did it in jodhpur also. that's right yeah maybe maybe rajasthan foundation also can be pitch in and they can do it because rajasthan foundation also yeah yeah, yeah. So, now i think the, the, they will also come up with something new because up, up to now it was always uh, i mean you yeah, know you can't meet and talk to people that's the problem right thank you sir for some more questions or do we have to let you go yeah this is another question because then i have to leave okay there one uh, one more question i think mino jain has got got her re- and raised mino can i ask a question yeah thank you so much uh vasunda ji so nice to see you and uh, meet you virtually by the way i like the painting and the frame behind Baby and an architect. That's my brother. That's my brother. Okay, okay. I love your ring also. My yeah. question too oh. is: When we get back to you back in Jaipur, being the CM of Rajasthan, how we can have tourism, you know, declared as the uh, how Jaipur can you know sustain it and make it a world class thing, and tourism and artisans can you know correlate each and every tourist spot can be designed and uh, restored in such a way that becomes the highlight. so it becomes you know we have uh, tourism season the whole year around instead of just four months five months minal yeah. first of all that's the reason why it's so 
<laughs> you're on a women's thing. You've noticed my ring, and you noticed my mother at the back. <laughs> but I have to also tell you that yes, this was a program we started because I believe that uh, tourism is a huge, uh, what you call it, employer. So it gives you huge opportunities and lots and lots of fields it touches. So we had thought of that and made that as one of our major planks when we came to government in the first instance. The idea was to first give every sambhag that we have seven sambhags in our uh, in our state. So every sambhag had got a festival, and we worked on each of these festivals differently and allowed a group of people to take over those festivals so that they could work to get the people from that area. uh to actually showcase whatever the best they had so somewhere there was music somewhere there was uh heritage somewhere there was uh textile somewhere there was um, books that kind of thing happened all over now after that also jaipur became an art city you remember at one point in time when the tribals came and descended on jaipur we asked them to spend uh 15 days painting whatever they felt like painting and then they put them on huge billboards all around the city of jaipur Right. and we told Even the british are painted yeah that the whole city became the museum mm. and if you remember mm. we all painted all the stations so that your coming to jaipur uh, would give would be an experience it things like that that you need to do to get these things moving people want to come to you unmute mute yourself please so what happened at the end of it restaurants suddenly opened you may have noticed uh, uh places like uh, jkk became uh, flourishing because music started happening there lots of other things happened which we had not imagined mm -hmm. and uh, people started coming in plain loads for the season and as people started coming in new ideas began flourishing a uh, magazine started coming out about what was going to happen during uh, the season i remember the last uh, dispensation we brought in time time out this year this time we weren't able to do that but time out we brought out so that people could just see what was happening and like that other people were i mean you know could come with publications so it's things like that and because it's such a uh, employer then everybody joined in uh you uh, know that in jaipur the your J jaipur jewelry uh, festival has gone through the roof it was a small thing started by rashmi ji mm. at one time but today look where it has got so everything even that has generated a huge amount of tourism but for that you have to keep working you cannot give it a break like now with the pandemic everything is stopped no flights coming in no people coming in no uh, way to communicate with each other a whole new uh, ecosystem will have to be worked upon introduced yeah. yeah something new will have to happen because we had with dravyavati nadi happening with all the things happening on the side of the river with the new gardens coming up with the new restaurants coming up it was going to be a happening it was going to be a really rocking area but again all of that through this pandemic has come to a halt so uh let's hope that this doesn't last very long and we're able to get back on our feet otherwise as i said a whole new system will have to be developed to thank you so much thank you mina thank you much for that vetun uh, raji well i'm happy that we spoke about uh, tourism so that's the uh, industry where i come from and uh, everywhere it is i would like to we're having a problem can, right uh, okay um yes yeah. Alka, yeah. I was saying something because of this tourism. There was a religious uh, tourism uh, at Vasudra Man's time. I think all the religious places actually got got the uh, you know upliftment and everything got very very streamlined and beautiful and clean. So I just wanted to add that too. Yeah, so, yeah. That was that was yes. another area because yeah. that's local. All the Bengali uh, families, all the Gujarati families, the Rajasthani yeah. families. everybody goes you know to various temples across the various states yes. so this was a very interesting thing that happened because lots of people came that tourism also picked up because of the temples yes and it just renovation of the temples made that kind of difference so i think there's just there's just such a lot to do and i hope this pandemic finish quickly yes you know i do think uh, sundar ji that uh, we have to be hopeful and uh, optimistic 
And I, I think we from Flo have tried to convert this crisis into an yes. opportunity. Opportunity. And done the best we can. Because coming as I do from the tourism industry of SM, we are, uh, as if we are all trying to work in travel bubbles and uh, work on training our people now on the new SOPs in place and uh, waiting till we can get all get back on our feet. So we should say that if you can't, the fishermen can't go out to sea, they repair their nets. Yes. Right now we are all trying to do. So may I uh, thank you on behalf of all of us in Flow and Creative Dignity for having honored us with your presence on this inauguration of our effort to work towards promoting and handholding distressed artisans. We would like to be champions of change, like you've mentioned. And I would like to tell you, I'll leave you with a poem that from Flow this year, we've gone ahead to adopt a village in each of our chapters. And we're trying, we've adopted an ITI in each of the chapters. We have That's to terrific. Do. Yes, so yesterday we had our first batch of 1,000 students we trained in the, in the ITIs. So this was with the help of all our chapters, which I call them one flow. So those are the That's things good. we can take forward. And the fact that flow has signed an MOU with the Ministry of Tourism, and they've, uh, they've taken cognizance of the fact that it's time for the women now. We've been 49% of 1.3 billion, we are 49% and we should make ourselves heard and we should make our presence felt in every stream. It, you, don't, you can't do without the woman, it's time she got her due recognition. So with that, I would reach out to you every time for your support and guidance. And we look forward to how we can learn more from you and work together. And uh, in this, let me thank uh, Creative Dignity for partnering with us today, Mira Goradi and your team for this work. Thanks to Latika Kosla for being with us. My thanks to uh, past president Neetha Bushra and my thanks to Alka Batra for having organized this meeting with our chief guest today. And we must let you go now, but I want to thank you from all of us for this learning and uh, for your blessings to make this humble effort and really be able to touch lives and make a difference. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, it was a pleasure to be here with all the gracious ladies of Flo. And um, I was not able to talk to Latika Ji, but I hope that we'll be able to connect at some point because there's a very, very good initiative yes. that is happening there. Yeah. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Congratulations, Janvi. How was it, Nita Ji? All good? People, thank you for a very powerful session with a wonderful champion. Uh, it, it just blew our mind away how, how you, you know, got the right person to fight in your corner. So thank you. Latika ji, you were awesome. The whole jo dil se jo aapne udgar bole hain apne, bohati. So thank you so much, everybody, on behalf of Creative Dignity. It's a huge movement. You will see another face another time, uh, and everyone's a volunteer. So I'll I'll leave, and I really, you know, all the platforms have gone live, and uh, we are so excited that for the next three months through this festive season, uh, Fiki Flow will be such a backbone to creative dignity. Thank you so much. Okay, bye bye. Wonderful. Bye. Thank you so much, everybody. See you all. Alka, are there guests? More? Janvi, have you left? Huh? I think, yeah, everybody left. I think Nita Ji, sab chale Chali to, apan Smriti ko hello bol lete hain. Hello, Nita Ji. Hello, 
बोल लेते हैं रेनू जी को बोल लेते हैं हाय स्मृति हाउ यू हाउ गुड भंगियों की तरह बैठी हुई हूँ बिल्कुल ही ऑफ कर देती हूँ ऐसे ही सुंदर लगती हूँ बोले थोड़ी लखनऊ में क्या लग रही थी दीवा रेणुका जी हाउ आर यू तुम छुपी हो कहा फोटो के पीछे सुंदर क्या ओर रखा ये शॉल हमको भी चाहिए ये साड़ी है मैं साड़ी आपको साड़ीजन का वन नाम बता दूंगी आप इसको एनरोल कर लो अपने गुजरात के उसमें ठीक है बहुत वेरी वेरी व्हाट यू शी ऑलवेज वेज वेरी प्रिटी थिंग्स एंड शी कैरी बट थैंक यू सो मच आई डोंट नो यू लवली प्रोग्राम या एंड यू नो द राइट वर्ड टू लॉन्च इट एंड द राइट इंटेंशन बिकॉज एक्चुअली में बहुत आर्टिसन सब बड़े परेशानी से Trust me, ask about UP. I had got three, four documentaries made, and they are such in pathetic state. Now I can't 